All right, so we are going to look at chapter 25, Cold War in America. Um, so let's just go back to the end of World War II really quick. So the origins of all this start with the Yalta Conference, which was the last time that the big three with FDR representing the U.S. Um, meet during World War II. This is where FDR and Churchill agree that Poland will be part of the Soviet sphere uh, to serve as a buffer between uh, the Soviets and Germany, and all agreed to have free and unfettered elections in border nations. The Soviet Union will not live up to that, which will fuel the uh, Cold War fires, but uh, keep that in mind, it is agreed to at the Yalta Conference. We are also going to create the United Nations at the Yalta Conference, um, and we're going to divide uh, Eastern Europe uh, between the three um, the three big allies. So then we're going to go to Potsdam. Okay, this is where Truman is now representing the U.S. FDR has passed. Truman is now the president, and he's really not a fan of Stalin and does not have any interest in negotiating with him. He demands that there be free elections in Finland, Hungary, Bulgaria, and Czechoslovakia, uh, but uh, Stalin does not agree to Poland or Romania. So... This failure is um, one of the things that fuels the Cold War. Stalin says, sure, these countries can have it, but not these ones. Truman looks at Stalin as pretty unreliable and is not interested in further negotiations with him. So we're going to move into our new foreign policy. Post-World War II is containment, the idea that we need to contain communism. We need to not let it spread beyond the Soviet Union, and we need to contain it from going anywhere else. Uh, this is really going to be coined by a telegram from a gentleman named Keenan in the State uh, Department. He's located in Moscow. He's serving over there right now. And he's going to call for a firm and vigilant policy of containment of Russian expansion. Uh, this is going to in turn lead to the Truman Doctrine. Okay, so you definitely need to know all of these. Truman Doctrine in 1947. This will assert that America, uh, it's our responsibility to support the free peoples who are resisting outside pressures. Mostly what this is going to look at is Greece and Turkey, who the communists are trying to gain power and take over. We are going to, in turn, open our checkbook and aid them in the hopes that we, democracy, be out communism. And it works. Eventually, in Turkey, we're actually going to get a missile base. So it works quite well strategically. Then we're going to get the Marshall Plan. This is kind of an expansion of the Truman Doctrine. The Marshall Plan, all of these expanding on our foreign policy, is going to pretty much say we're going to open up our checkbooks and we are going to open up our military assistance and help every European nation recover from the war. Okay, so if you need help, we have bodies. If you need money, we'll open up our checkbooks. Um, this is the Marshall Plan. So we're going to go from now containment, so isolation to containment. Now we're going to have the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan all revolving around financially assisting European countries. Uh, in the hopes that the communists don't come in and sway them. So World War II, uh, we're going to consolidate German zones, okay? Um, so we're going to have Berlin is going to be divided into four zones. We're going to have the French, British, and U.S., and then we're going to have the Soviet zone, okay? So uh, what's going to happen in 48 is that the Soviets are going to institute a blockade. Now, geographically, you need to know that Berlin is located, all right, in the Soviet sphere of Germany, all right, so though we have a piece of Berlin, it is located in the Soviet monitored section of Germany. So they're going to shut down the roads and they're going to institute a blockade. So under this NATO pact, all right, 12 nations agree to um, create the Federal Republic of Germany. So that's going to be um, the free democratic Germany, all right, versus the communist Soviet Germany. What we're going to do for this blockade in Berlin is we're going to use planes and we are going to fly strategically over Berlin and we are going to drop goods and we're going to do this for quite some time, eventually leading uh, to the Soviets undoing the blockade because it's just not quite working. Okay, so taking a look here, all right, you can see Berlin located in the uh, Soviet monitored section of Germany. All right, so they're going to blockade and we're going to overcome it.
All right, so continuing on the containment strategy, we're going to get something called the NSC-68. So what this is referring to is that in September of 49, Soviets are going to detonate their first atomic bomb. Okay, so we have a bomb, and now they have a bomb. So Truman is going to turn to the National Security Council, and they're going to establish the Security Act. In 1950, all right, the Security Act is going to deliver the report in SC-68, which basically marks a turning point because what it does is it leads us to developing a hydrogen bomb. Okay, the idea is increase taxes, pay for increase in defense, and ramp up our production of bombs and other military needs. As you can notice, our federal spending is going to... Uh, increase and our defense spending is also on the rise looking at post-world war ii from 1950 we spike up and it just keeps going all right so let's look at containment in asia all right there's going to be a civil war in china remember china was really harmed by world war ii with japan's invasion so they're going to be divided we're going to have mao zedong he's going to challenge the nationalist forces okay nationalist forces are led by Chiang kai-shek we're going to support uh, Shek, all right, over $2 billion in aid, okay? The U.S. is going to cut off all aid, all right, that finds its way to Mao Zedong, all right? Um, and he's going to pretty much push Chiang Kai-shek out um, of China into Taiwan, all right? Um, and Truman is going to be blamed for losing China to communism, Okay. So Mao Zedong is going to beat the nationalist. Chiang Kai-shek is going to be pushed to Taiwan. And we are then going to cut off all aid to Mao Zedong and China after that. Um, we are not going to acknowledge China as a communist nation until the 1970s. So this is going to lead to some serious tensions uh, within containment and the Cold War. One of those showing when the war heats up and gets hot in Korea. So the Soviets and the U.S. are jointly going to be occupying Korea during this time at the 38th parallel. Super important you remember that. Okay. Korea is going to desire to reunify. All right. Um, and so we're going to, the U.N. is going to send out um, peacekeeping forces to kind of help assist South Korea in defending North Korea's desire for communism and to unify Korea under communist regime. China is then going to enter, and it's going to support North Korea along with the Soviets. So we now have communist Northern Korea versus democratic Southern Korea. All right, the war is going to drag on for two years. Uh, we're going to spend a lot of money on this. It is eventually going to lead to the termination of MacArthur, who was a World War II hero in the Pacific. Uh, Americans loved him. He's who helped beat the Japanese. Uh, he is a huge hero. Um, but Truman is going to end up firing him due to MacArthur's interest in using stronger military weapons, such as nuclear weapons, on North Korea and China. Um, all right, so we're going to lead to the Munich um, analogy. This is kind of um, kind of fearing appeasement with Stalin. All right, leading to further wars. Um, we're going to analyze this appeasement that once existed um and we're pretty much going to say no to stalin okay um we're going to resist him we're going to resist soviet influence and we're going to flood money in wherever we can um and militarily take action where we need to against the soviets so there will be no appeasement with stalin and the soviets on the part of the u.s so if you look at this north korea um Eventually, right, the UN troops begin to make headway, um, and we take up into China, and then we get pushed back down. Eventually, this leads to the 38th parallel. Uh, we're going to have a ceasefire, which is signed, all right, um, in 1953. And what you need to remember is that a ceasefire is not a peace treaty. So the war technically is still going on. We simply have a ceasefire, uh, which is why every time North Korea does something, um, we get a little nervous, so. All right, the 1948 election is gonna happen. Um, Truman's gonna hope to expand on the New Deal. Uh, the Democratic Party is gonna split because they're gonna have what's called a Dixiecrat. Um, a Dixiecrat is a Democrat holding on to the Confederate Democrat ways, okay? So um, more segregation, uh, more 
white supremacy. Um, that's going to be what the Dixiecrats kind of stand for, while the Democrats um, are starting to kind of shift otherwise, okay? So protesting the party's civil rights platform, all right, um, and supporting segregation, that's where the Dixiecrats come out. And then um, they're challenging Truman because he has desegregated the military at this point. He's de desegregated other federal institutions. So Democrats who do not like that are going to join with the Dixiecrats and fight that. So the Republican Party is going to put up government, um, Governor uh, Dewey, all right, and Truman is going to win, okay? But you wouldn't know that by the newspapers being published. Everybody thought, okay, that it was going to be Dewey. Um, they were just, they were sure he was going to win. Newspapers were published, and yet here's Truman, the winner of the election, holding a headline that is not at all accurate. Reminiscent of possibly a recent election in the last four years. All right, here's showing who took who. Obviously, right, the um, Dixiecrats took the southern states mostly. Uh, Thomas Dewey didn't take too much except for New England um, and a couple of Midwestern states. Truman's going to institute something called the Fair Deal. Remember the New Deal? Now we have the Fair Deal. National health insurance. Um, aid for education, housing programs, expanding social security, increase to the minimum wage. All of this is going to be what he wants to do, and he's going to succeed at it. Then comes the Red Scare. Uh, Truman is going to be in the mix of this, and he is going to participate in the loyalty um, security program. So basically, what's going to happen is Truman has, um, he issues the executive order 9835, creating this loyalty program, permitting investigations of federal employees um, if they refuse to take a loyalty oath to the federal government, okay? Labor unions, of course, throughout time, we've always looked at them as socialists, communists, anarchists, whatever, so we don't like them still here. And then the NAACP is going to take a huge hit, and a lot of their offices are going to be forced to close, especially in the South, being viewed as communist backed. So there's a huge windfall that comes with this loyalty program. All right, the House Un-American Activities Committee, um, they're gonna further spark the Red Scare. All right, they're gonna have public hearings. They're gonna be alleging communist infiltration in the movie industry. Uh, 10 producers, writers, and directors are gonna be jailed for refusing to participate. They will also be blacklisted, um, never to work in Hollywood again. All right. And so Soviet archives, though, tell us today that the Communist Party in the U.S. was taking money and instructions from the Soviet Union. So there were connections. It did exist. Um, and most of it because we didn't totally know how the Soviets were running their communist country. Um, a lot of people in America just kind of liked the idea of Marxist communism, uh, equality for everybody, and um, those kind of ideas but that's not how the Soviet ran. Um, McCarthyism is gonna come. So Senator Joseph McCarthy, Republican from Wisconsin, he's gonna claim to have a list of 200 communists working in the State Department. Uh, this is, just by sheer luck, going to help him win re-election into the Senate, at which point he is going to begin smearing everybody. So there's going to be hearings, they're gonna be publicized on TV, everybody's scared of everybody because who knows who's a communist, um, even if you're not a communist, you're being blamed. Too bad for you. It's hard to really prove that you're not guilty of being a communist. The only thing that eventually brings down McCarthyism and the Red Scare is going to be when he attacks the army and he begins saying that there are communists in the army. This is the last straw. Continuity throughout time. Do not go after our military. Do not ever speak ill about our military. Um, they are going to now turn on him. America is going to turn on McCarthy. He's pretty much going to disappear into uh, the dark. Uh, and a very popular TV news anchor, Edward R. Murrow, he's going to challenge McCarthy on TV, and this is going to further plummet him into uh, obscurity. All right, so looking at Eisenhower. Um, Eisenhower, remember, he was a general from World War II, European fronts, hugely popular. All right, so he's going to come to power in um, America. He's going to be our new president. And then in the Soviet Union, Nikita Khrushchev is going to follow Stalin as the leader of the Soviet Union. Stalin's going to pass away. He's going to lay in state for like ever. Um, Khrushchev, he's going to be calling for peaceful coexistence. 
Um, and then in the meantime, he's going to also go crush the Hungarian fight for independence. So he says one thing and then does something else. So Eisenhower in return is going to increase production of the hydrogen bomb. Um, he does not like McCarthy. Um, <clears throat> he gets elected at the height of McCarthyism. Um, so he just kind of doesn't uh, talk to him and avoids him at all costs. Okay. Um, all right. So in Vietnam, things are going to start heating up there. Okay. Vietnam really starts in pre-World War II, arguably. It's occupied by France. Um, France gets occupied fighting the war. So then um, it gets occupied by Japan. <laughs> and then uh, World War II ends. So then Japan's out and France is like, hey, wait, we want our place back. Um, and at that point, this guy, Ho Chi Minh, who spent some time in China is like, Ooh, I don't think so. We should be our own independent country. All right. So picking that up, Eisenhower is going to fear that the French, I mean, you know, you gotta love the French. They try, um, militarily, they're not doing so well here trying to hold their, uh, territory and their colony in France. Ho Chi Minh is beating them. Eisenhower is nervous about this. All right, so once 1954 hits and the French are defeated, this leads to the Geneva Accords, which partitions off Vietnam, similar to Korea, except we're going to partition off at the 17th parallel. All right, and there's to be elections held in 1956 that are going to be for reunification, except everybody's hands are going to be in this election because the Soviets and China are going to want it to be a communist country, and the U.S. is going to want it to be a democratic country. So... We are going to reject these accords. We're going to use the CIA to install a pro-U.S. government in the South. Um, DM is going to be the president. We'll back him, though, unfortunately, this begins the precedent that is set that we back people in countries where communists are trying to take over and who we're backing tend to be really horrible dictators. So... Um, not a good trend for us, but all right. Meanwhile, in the Middle East, again, the Soviets are trying to make waves. All right. <clears throat> so first we're going to establish Israel. All right. So Palestine, they're going to believe that um, they hold the rights to the Jewish homeland. Zionists, who are the um, Jewish people post-World War II, believing that they hold um, rights to the homeland, are going to begin moving there. Israel is then created. Um, and Britain releases the land for that to happen. This then turns to the Arab League invading um, and Palestinian forces being pushed out of the region and into refugee camps. So keep this in mind, right? It starts here. Israel is now a country and a territory. Palestine is living in refugee camps um, and tensions exist with Britain and the U.S. on one side and Arab nations on the other. Truman is going to recognize that Israel um, is its own country. All right. Um, and then next we're going to look at Egypt. Okay. So Egypt is going to declare independence from Britain in 1952. They're going to nationalize the Suez Canal, which is a big deal because this is a huge transportation, um, system here, uh, between countries through the waters. Uh, Britain, France, and Israel are going to attack Egypt because of this. They want access to the canal, not Egypt to have control of it. So then in come the Soviets. All right, chaos ensues. Eventually, the Suez Canal is opened back up, but it leads to Eisenhower Doctrine, which basically says, hey, Middle East, any country that wants to fight communism and not be under their thumb, you can call us. We have your back. All right, so that's the Eisenhower Doctrine. Quickly, we're going to get into the election of 1960 and the new frontier. So we had the New Deal. Then we have the fair deal. Now we have the new frontier. This is going to be Kennedy. Kennedy is going to defeat Nixon. All right. Yay for television because Nixon looks pretty good, rested and kind of cute. Nixon looks sick, pale and kind of sickly. So Nixon's going to, or Nixon's going to lose. Kennedy's going to win. Uh, first off, Kennedy is going to have to deal with the Cuban um, situation of the Bay of Pigs. So basically, um, a group of people want to invade Cuba. They want to take back control. Um, and we're going to support it. It's going to be an ultimate failure and a huge embarrassment. Um, then in the middle of the night in August of 1961, we're going to have the Berlin wall being constructed. Uh, 
So that's going to be something that um, JFK is going to have to deal with. And then we're going to have the Cuban Missile Crisis, whereby the Soviets are sending missiles to set up a base in Cuba, 90 miles off the coast of Florida, pointing their missiles at us. Sort of a situation there. Um, and we will talk about it more. But what it eventually leads to is um, a standoff, 13 days, huge negotiations. Eventually, the Soviets remove the missiles from Cuba. In turn, we remove missiles from Turkey. And we all move on to our typical Cold War um, stances. So Kennedy also is going to institute the Peace Corps and space exploration. These are going to be really big, important uh, things for him and his new frontier. Peace Corps is a way to show that democracy is good. See, look at us helping you develop in these countries. We're good people. You should like us more than the others. Um, and then we're going to create NASA and we're going to try to go to the moon. Here's an image of the wall. Um, this is after construction. Take note of this area right here. This is dead man's zone. So if you do make it over one area, you get stuck in this area trying to get over the next wall. This is usually where people in the turrets uh, end up shooting you. So something to think about. All right. Vietnam. Kennedy's going to try to expand some forces. He's going to send in Green Berets. Uh, DM. Uh, he is going to um, be working against the National Liberation Fronts. Okay, that's the Viet Cong. So that's the North um, Vietnamese. President Diem, he's going to persecute Buddhists, of all people, really. Um, he is a Catholic, and he hates Buddhists. Buddhists are then going to demonstrate against President Diem, and pictures are going to hit our papers of Buddhist monks setting themselves on fire in protest. This doesn't land well in America. We're kind of like, what is going on over there? Um, in 1963, Kennedy is frustrated with Diem. Um, he, Diem, eventually overthrows the military generals, is overthrown by the military generals and assassinated, um, which then puts the South into chaos. But Kennedy can't do much about it. He's going to get assassinated um, in Dallas in 1963. And this will kind of turn our country into a different turmoil. So lots of stuff in here. Get it in your notes. Um, update your big ideas. Definitely have lots of political figures and key events to get in there. Be sure to be thinking about those themes and it helps you with your uh, essays. All right. Until next time, guys.